Welcome to Real Estate and Taxes with Lakshay, where we help you minimize your taxes. Thank you guys yes. for joining in. Um, I hope we are all keeping up with the New Year resolutions. Uh, for me, the New Year resolution is doing all of these presentation every Tuesday at 2 p.m. regardless. So once again, thank you guys for joining in and showing your support for the last year. This year, uh, we're going to you know, come up with better topics and more information for you guys in order to help guide you in your taxes. Uh, once again, my name is Lakshay for those of you who are brand new. And I do presentations on accounting, taxation and bookkeeping. And if anyone needs your help in terms of, you know, filing your taxes for 2022, you can certainly reach out to me. We are a full cycle bookkeeping, accounting, as well as taxation firm operating out of Mississauga as well as uh, Brampton. So if you want to, you know, book an appointment and see me in person, more than happy to, you know, meet you in person and help you minimize some taxes. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's topic is actually related to tax changes in 2023. There are a lot of new news that you know we heard in regards to changing in tax brackets, new anti-flipping rules, foreign buyer ban for two years. So I'll you know give you a brief overview and touch upon a few of those uh, changes that has happened. The changes that I'll be discussing today will technically relate to you and your business. I might have missed a couple of them just because, you know, sometimes it's not related to the real estate industry. So I've left those out. But uh, certainly, I think um, this will be a worthwhile presentation. So let's get started. So first and foremost, the federal tax brackets. Uh, previously, if you notice, the tax brackets were actually in 2022. Uh, they were 15, 20, 26, 29 and 33 for the federal income taxes. Now, with with the inflation of you know six percent they have technically you know rounded up and to better reflect the taxes this year so now if you were to earn zero to 53 you'll be in the 15 percent tax bracket and then 53 to 100k would be 20.5 26 29 and anything over 235 is 33 percent federal tax bracket but remember that it also should have uh, the provincial portion of the tax bracket, which will technically bring you to 50% in the highest tax bracket, marginal tax bracket, if you were earning income on your personal name. So if you're a realtor and you haven't incorporated yet, this would be a year where you should be looking into that direction. If you're earning income under your personal name, you pay personal income taxes, right? And as your income increases, you pay more taxes. But if you're a real estate agent, you can actually incorporate and through the help of incorporation, uh, you basically save on taxes and you, you basically defer paying taxes because on the first $500,000 of income, you only pay 12.2 taxes. So once again, 12.2% taxes for $500,000 worth of income if you are incorporated individual. So something to think about and you know look in that direction in this current year. The next is the increased TFSA and RSP limits. Previously, TFSA limit was approximately 6,000 and now it has increased to 6,500. Uh, the limit had not changed since 2019. So it's a good jump now if you wanna you know, look into that direction of you know, saving or as well as growing your investments tax-free. Once again, tax-free savings account is for people who are investing in stocks or someone who wants to invest in the market and not pay on any growth. So if I bought an Apple stock 10 years ago, it might be a hundred bucks. Now it's probably sitting at $2,000. So if I've had purchased that in TFSA, all of the growth in within that TFSA in the income would be tax-free. So something to think about whenever you are you know, investing in the stock market, TFSA is your best bet. Then let's come to the RSP dollar limit. RSP limit was at 29,000. Now it has increased to 30,000. It's a, only a marginal jump, not so much, but still I think it's something to think about for your clients as well as for yourself. Because if you are investing in the RSP, you get a tax break. So if I put $100 in RSP, I get a 15% tax credit on my tax return. And I can, you know, you reduce my tax dollar bill in the current year if I wanted to. Once again, the last day to contribute to your RSP is actually February 28th, March 1. Basically, end of February is what you would want to aim towards. If you have any severe income that you made in prior year and you want to increase your tax bill, uh, sorry, decrease your tax bill, look into putting some of the money in RSP contribution room because that can certainly help you reduce your tax bill. There's also a cumulative limit that is coming from prior year. So if you're self-employed and you know you have 
18% of the income is what your max limit technically works. Although it shows here 30,000 is the maximum, but it is subject to your 18% annual income in the prior year. First time home savings account. This is something that is brand new. So I'll take a pause at this and uh, has anyone heard of the first time home savings account? Yes. Perfect, Jamil, go ahead. Yeah, because the government has uh, created like, like TFSA, that you can put a payment, I think the limit is around 40, I believe, and that can be used as a down payment. Yes, perfect. So in simple words, first time home savings account is a brand new, basically just like the name suggests, it's for first time home buyers who are Canadian citizens over the age of 18 that are looking to buy their first home. Starting off April 1, 2023, they can contribute for a maximum of $8,000 in this account. If you do it five years, so 8,000 times five, which is $40,000 is your maximum that you can claim within five years. Why would someone want to use the first time home savings account? The simple reason is it works exactly like an RSP, but better. Our recipes for new first time home buyers, you know, you have a cap of contributing of up until your prior years, 18% of your prior year's income. For first time home savings account, this is technically at $8,000 regardless of what your income was prior year. So it's actually better than RSP. Similar to RSP, it gives you an additional tax break on your tax return. So just like when you put to RSP, you reduce your taxable amount. Similar to when you put money towards your first time home savings account, you can also reduce your tax bill. So it works similar to an RSP. We all know when we withdraw money from the home buyer's plan to buy our first home, in the notice of assessment, we have to repay that money back into our RSP within 15 years. But with the first time home savings account, there is no repayment option. So you do not have to re-contribute that money into your first time savings account and it works flawlessly. So if you have someone who's looking to buy their first home this year, first of all, get a tax reduction by contributing 8,000 as an individual and contribute to your RSP and get doubled it. Basically, you get both the benefits of home savings account as well as RSP combined in one. So try to, you know, look into that because it can certainly, you know, reduce your tax bill as well as help your client acquire their first home great, great opportunity great initiative for and uh, one more thing is if it's a husband and wife so it's eight thousand each so it's actually you can contribute sixteen thousand per year for five years which will work out to maybe eighty thousand dollars which is again a sizable amount when it comes to paying a down payment for your home uh, let's say one question go ahead uh, so this money is a tax deductible means you will get plan get benefit for mm -hmm. tax deductible Yes, just like an RSP, first time home savings account gives you a tax deduction on your tax return. So very good opportunity. So it's actually you can double dip, contribute to your RSP as well as this account and, you know, get both the benefits. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next tax credit. It is called the home renovation tax credit. This is once again uh, brand new for people who are looking or living in a multi-generational homes where you know you have your grandparents your children or your parents living together with you um, so in this scenario if let's assume you have a grandparent and you want to build them a garden suite right you live in Brampton and you want to build them a garden suite and the cost of you know constructing that is like say two hundred thousand dollars you can claim fifty thousand dollars off that two hundred thousand on your tax return and get fifteen percent tax credit so up to fifty thousand dollars of qualifying renovation to keep your grandparents uh, in the same house or like you know in this within the same vicinity they need to be a senior or like you know an adult or a person with disability that you are doing this renovation for but you know this is something that can certainly you know reduce your taxes as well as uh, give you a good tax credit uh, on your taxes so home renovation tax credit once again it was proposed in 2022 but 2023 onwards is when it became qualified for people to you know claim it on their taxes so look into this because you know it kind of ties in with my other presentation where i was talking about building a garden suite and uh, you know garden suites are costing a lot of money so why don't we you know suppress some of the cost by using the fifty thousand dollar qualifying renovation credit towards it so like the question that uh, can can it just not be a garden suite and just be a basement if people want to do their basements. Yes, yes. Okay. 
So anything that would basically keep the grandparents and you know extended family within the home, uh, which requires some renovation, would qualify for this renovation tax credit. And I also strongly encourage whenever you're doing some something sizable like this, it's always good to even call CRA and find out that this is what my plan is. I heard about this credit. Uh, would this apply in my situation? Right. So um, just it's better to be safe oh, yeah. than sorry. Go ahead. Um, so in families, CRA has a very specific definition that it has to be blood relation. When we try to involve like sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws, it kind of gets blurry. So unless that person has a disability, if they qualify, but it would be difficult to qualify like an extended family member in order to you know get this credit. So I would once again, uh, you know, because th this renovation credit is mostly for people with their senior or they have mobility issues. For brothers and sisters that are, you know, completely fine, they're not going to uh, start giving renovation tax credits. So the next one that is, you know, concerning the real estate industry a lot is the anti-flipping rules. I think most of people know what flipping is. Flipping basically means you buy a fixture upper, you renovate it and you flip it for a profit, right? Uh, you bought it for let's say 500,000, you put 50,000 in, in renovation and you flip it for $750,000. So 550 was your initial cost, 750 was your selling. So 750 minus 550, $200,000 of capital gain taxes. Out of that, 50% gets added to your income and you pay taxes on $100,000 on your income. Now, this has changed. In the past, people were able to, you know, do this, move into the house, claim it their principal residence, live there for six months, fixture operate, renovate it, sell it just for the purposes of, you know, protecting, not paying taxes on the gain, right? Anti-flipping rules simply reverses that. So if you starting January 2023, if you has a, have a home that you basically occupied for less than 12 months, and you, you want to claim your principal residence on it and you did some renovation and you flip it, your principal resident exemption, which basically protects you from paying any capital gains tax will be eradicated. So you will basically be paying taxes. It's not even taxes, it's actually be uh, the full business as a 100% business income tax. So previously, only 50% of the capital gains was taxable. Now with the anti-flipping rules, 100% of the gain will be added as to your income as business income and all of it would be taxable. The anti-flipping rules is basically trying to stop speculation and the increasing housing prices that was you know caused by people who are quickly flipping the houses. This rule is basically called telling them that hey if you bought a house and you're trying to flip it before one year we're not only going to charge you for capital gains tax, we will charge you for the 100% taxable. The 100% of the income will be added to your tax return and you'll be paying business income taxes. Instead, previously it was only 50% taxable. So keep in mind, even if you live there, it doesn't matter. You won't be protected for the principal residence exemption because most people, what they were doing is they were occupying the home and they were claiming it there principal residence and six months they would basically sell it as we all know in Canada principal residence you whenever you sell it you don't pay any taxes people were doing that so to stop that anti-flipping rules have come in place and you know so your client and you also need to be careful whenever you're trying to you know uh, flip a pro house for profit let's say this is Vince I can I ask you a question go ahead if it's a first time home buyer you don't have any other properties he moves into the property and sell it after six months still he has to pay yes that is what the rule says the rule says if you live there for less than 12 months you will need to pay taxes not just 50 percent you would have to pay 100 percent taxes on the game okay they just Even basically want to slow down the things that's all exactly yeah thank you thank yeah. you and uh, what are the like you said with certain exemptions uh what are the exceptions e exceptions <laughs> So exemption to this is you would need to live there at least for a year and, you know, only then you can avoid it. But let's assume you moved in and there are, uh, you know, there's a family marriage breakdown. There's death in the family, which is why you need to sell it. Or there is, a you know, um, like a job relocation to a different province where you're forced to sell the home before 12 months. Uh, only then uh -huh. those, those would be allowed. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
The answer is yes if you do only do it this transaction once every 2 years but if you are a serial investor where you're doing these two or three properties per year that means it's your business and on business it's 100% taxable so CRA looks at the frequency of these kind of transaction so i have a couple slides left let's keep the questions till the end so uh, the last one i have is foreign buyer ban we all know about the foreign buyer ban If you are not a PR or not a Canadian citizen, you're looking to buy a residential home in Canada. You are banned as a foreign buyer for two years, starting Jan 2023. The only exception that you have is you can technically buy properties that are outside of the metropolitan area or buildings that are larger, like multiplexes or recreational properties like cottages and lake houses, where the population is like less than 10,000, or even commercial properties that you can look into. Only those are are exempt from this ban but if you are looking to buy a property throughout Canada in the central metropolitan area which is you know Toronto the GTA you will be banned from buying for at least 2 years who is exempt from this ban so anyone who is basically who has a, a valid status here so even if you are a refugee if you if you're an international student if you have a you know a work permit you're exempt from the ban basically you you can still because you're already in Canada you can still buy and you know you can basically live here and that kind of wraps up today's presentation thank you once again everyone for joining in i'll be doing another presentation next tuesday so feel free to join that as well 